We're sisters, best friends, and authors on a mission to help you stoke your creative fire and live the life of your dreams. We believe that purpose fuels passion and that creativity is your secret weapon for mass construction. There's never been a better time to bless the world with your dream realized. You're listening to The Kate and Abby Show. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Kate and Abby Show. We're so happy to see you here today. We're going to tackle the topic of how to stay focused in your writing, but not only just how to stay focused in general, how to stay focused through the holiday season. So as we are approaching the holiday season, things start to get busy for many of us and the world just seems a bit busier and more hectic in general. So how can we stay grounded in our craft even throughout the holiday season? Maybe you have family coming over or staying over and that can always throw you for a loop sometimes when it comes to working on projects because you have to set aside things to make time for family and friends, which is wonderful, but we also wanna make sure we're giving our craft, our writing, our books, the proper attention they deserve. So we're going to delve into some specific tips that we're utilizing and that we would recommend for staying focused throughout the holiday season. But first, we have to thank our sponsors who are you guys. You're the ones who support this show and keep it going and we couldn't do without you. So thank you so much to our amazing patrons. And if you get value out of this podcast, go to patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show and help us keep it alive and free of interruptions. So staying focused on writing throughout the holiday season can be a bit different than staying focused at other times because we we've done episodes in the past about how to stay focused on writing and how to write in a way that um, you're you're being efficient with your time you're being respectful with your time and being respectful to your own craft but during the holiday season you have a high uh, high ratio of interruptions <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know what I mean for sure so a lot of people have like family coming over or maybe they have kids I know there's a lot of moms and dads listening you have kids you have relatives coming over there's a lot to manage there's a lot to think about so how can we break this down in such a way that you're still being able to write you're still being able to take time for yourself and your book without everything else in your life <laughs> falling to crap <laughs> in yeah. the meantime. Yes. So I, what are like some of the ways that you stay focused just in general, like especially approaching the holidays? Well, the number one thing for me is having designated writing days. And I know I've said this before, but I couldn't say it enough because it's so valuable to have days of your week or days in your schedule that are already pre-designed, set aside, planned out in advance of this is my writing time and nothing will disturb me from it unless it's like an emergency. Otherwise, that is your writing day. And giving your writing that priority in your schedule is not only a a great practice of taking your work seriously, taking your new career seriously, but it also helps other people to take it seriously. So if you're like, you know, Sunday is my writing day or Friday is my writing day or Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday are my writing days and nothing can disturb those days, then treating that with seriousness will help other people to not interrupt it (laughs) and also will help you to stick to it because when you start sharing your schedule with other people, you're now creating this accountability system sort of. Right. where people expect to see you writing on that day. And if you're not, they might be like, hey, I thought you were supposed to be writing today. <laughs> what are you doing? Scrolling <laughs> through Pinterest. What are you doing? Shopping online for fun Christmas cookie cutters or whatever the case may be. <laughs> right. Or Christmas shopping or doing anything, anything that's not writing. That when you hold yourself accountable, other people will also hold you accountable. And that is really valuable, I think. Yeah. Especially when you're approaching a time of of the year where it's going to be busier. And taking that into account, I think it's also important to adjust your schedule based on what you see coming up that might be conflicting with your schedule. Right. Because a recipe for getting yourself bummed out is to be like, no matter what, I am going to write every day and I don't care if things are busy. I'm just going to dedicate myself to this. And then you're disappointed when it doesn't happen. And you're like, oh, see, I just can't do it. Well, how about we realize that, you know, we don't need to do everything all the time. 
we can plan, like Abby was just saying, plan what days make sense. Right. So if you know, hey, I'm, I need to be able to do things with my kids or my spouse or my relatives or friends and family coming over for these holidays, then figure out what days are going to be busy are going to not be conducive for writing and set those aside as days where, hey, I'm going to take that as a rest day from my craft and I'm going to just focus on that and get those, get non-writing things done. And right. then delegate writing to days where there's a lull. Yeah, that's that's a great point. And another thing that has helped me is to plan on having, not having two writing days in a row sometimes when you know that there are going to be unexpected things that come up in your schedule that will need your attention. It's much better if you can, even if you're in the midst of a writing day or a really good writing session and you don't want to stop for that day to be able to pencil something in for your schedule the following day rather than, well, I've already set in stone all of these days and they can't change. So basically, I know it sounds a bit like I'm contradicting myself here, but what I mean by designated writing days is having the space in your schedule for it, but being able to move it around. Right. So I'm going to have two writing days this week, or I'm going to have three writing days this week, but it doesn't necessarily need to be Monday, Thursday, Friday. Right. It can it can be malleable. Yeah. Especially around a busy time of year when things might need to be shuffled around to give yourself the freedom to shuffle things around. Yes, for sure. But make sure that you don't let other things come in and crowd your sacred time to practice your art because it's very important. Especially I think in December, because you, a lot of people have just finished NaNoWriMo, and if you just finished NaNoWriMo, you want to keep the habit going. And we talked about a few episodes ago, creating a writing habit with Nano and using that to kind of springboard your new habit or resolution, however you want to look at it, of writing consistently, even if it's not every day, but consistently. And the holidays can sometimes derail that that perseverance because it's a distracting time for a lot of people. And then once you get into January, you're all motivated to start again and start a new habit. But why wait till January? Why not carry your awesome habit from NaNoWriMo or even if you didn't do NaNo, still carrying that habit of writing consistently through December? And taking into account that there will be time, there will be more more of your time will be taken up, I think, by by other events and things happening, like you were saying. But that doesn't mean you can't make any space for it. I think it's just a matter of being honest with yourself about your schedule and also looking at yourself and your schedule as kind of a, from a third person perspective of what can I maybe let go of or make room for right, so that I can have that writing time. Yeah, and also just accepting that this is a busier time. Yeah. And so you're avoiding bumming yourself out over the fact that, oh, I didn't get to write every day this week. Well, yeah, that's going to just happen. (laughs) That's going to happen, so it's a given. And it's better to embrace it than fight it and be disappointed in yourself over and over again and plan for it. Like Abby's saying, shuffle the days around to what works. It doesn't have to always be a set in stone thing. Even if that's what you do normally, what works for one season doesn't necessarily work for another season, both in life and with the four seasons of the year, actually. So plan for distractions. I think that's a better way to go about it than letting distractions just sneak up on you and take you by surprise plan for those distractions and And that way you can you can feel good about the decisions you're making yeah exactly and embracing distractions i think can be especially beneficial (laughs) during the holiday season and by that i mean if you are pulled away from your writing and maybe it's not something that you want to be doing like you want to be writing but you have to you feel obligated to go do something else or you have to you made some plan to do something else and you wish that you were writing 
don't think of it in like a negative light of, oh, I wish, wish I was writing right now and I don't want to be here. I don't want to be at this holiday party or I don't want to be Christmas shopping or doing this other thing, whatever the case may be. Embrace those moments and try to find inspiration in them. Because this is something that actually last year, um, I found a lot of inspiration in just relaxing and enjoying the holidays. And that was when I wrote The Best Christmas Ever, <laughs> which is my new book. Um, my sequel to 100 Days of Sunlight, which is a holiday story. It is a Christmas story and, and it's out. So go buy yes. your copy if you haven't already. <laughs> yes, you guys probably have heard me talk about it a lot on my channel. But I wrote it last year during the Christmas season, and it was really fun to find inspiration in those distracting things. <laughs> you know, the fun, the excursions, the the moments when you're just relaxing and spending time with your family or friends. And I found a lot of inspiration with that in those moments, and that helped to fuel my creativity. Yeah. So I think that even when you're not writing, you're still creative. Your creative mind is always awake and alive and seeking new ideas. And you'll never know where you'll find those ideas. I love that your creative mind is always awake. That's so true. Yeah. Because we always talk about on this show how you have to be filling the cup. You can't pour out of an empty cup. Right. So think of that too as you approach the holiday season. What are some of the things you enjoy? Make sure that you are allowing yourself to have that sacred time to enjoy the season with those you with your dear ones and gain inspiration from that yeah allow it to be a nourishing time um for so many people i think it can become uh frantic <laughs> and hectic because of uh you know maybe influences of like you know it has to be this high consumption perfect event or you have to have all these friends and family it doesn't necessarily have to be it doesn't have to necessarily be stressful it can be you know what really nourishes me what things do i enjoy but we're not talking about how to have the best christmas ever that's abby's book <laughs> um i was gonna say too kind of uh reeling back in here um Waking up early in writing or staying up later in writing can be a good way to work around the holiday season. So if you know, ooh, these are going to be busy days, but I still want to be able to write. It doesn't have to be like a three-hour writing session. Maybe you just get up a half hour earlier and have that sacred time to yourself to write for a half hour with a cup of coffee or tea. Or maybe at night after everyone else goes to bed or your kids go to bed if you have kids you have that quiet time to yourself to be able to write for a little while. Yeah. Yeah, I think whichever the, works best for you. Like I know some people are morning people, some people are night people. Like. Yeah. I think time alone is very underrated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and oftentimes in, during the holidays, you don't get a lot of time alone because there's a lot of family gatherings and just a lot of people around. But finding those moments to be alone I find really sparks my creativity. The moments where I can really sink into a brainstorming session and write my book in my head, as I like to call it, which is basically going in detail, going through scenes in detail and visualizing them and kind of like constructing dialogue and writing dialogue in my head. Those moments where that comes to me, the the clearest is when I'm alone. It's usually always when I'm alone. Usually the best moments are after I work out and I take time to like stretch and just relax. Th that's a really good moment for inspiration for me for some reason. That's also cool. going for walks alone, even just like getting ready, taking a shower, getting ready, putting my makeup on. All of those moments that I'm just alone are very, um, it's easier to go into this relaxed kind of zen mode in your mind and there's no distraction so those moments i think are very valuable to be by yourself and be silent or you know you can listen to music that inspires you i do that sometimes but it's really like more of a mindfulness yeah this is what so you're many people describing and, and i do this sometimes too but i oftentimes i notice when it's just too much input yeah. for me a lot of people will fill those moments with 
noise of some kind. And it's not always bad noise. A lot of times it's educational, like listening to an audiobook or something. I listen to audiobooks a lot when I'm stretching and doing my makeup and stuff like that. But sometimes I'm just like, I need quiet. I need to just go into my mind palace yes. <laughs> and and visualize my story. And I just need that. It's like a need. You yeah. can feel that you need it. You right. know, there's so much to be said for doing nothing. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and I mean that in the most constructive way possible, because a lot of culture online and stuff today uh, preaches this idea of having every moment of your day filled up with something mm -hmm. or like you were saying consuming yes, exactly. something you're always consuming whether it's food whether it's like actual things you're buying or places you're going or audiobooks and movies and tv you know now you can stream it from your phone now you have wi-fi in your car now you have a wi-fi on the airplane it's like oh my gosh you know getting away from it right but there is a lot to be said for unplugging. And I know you guys are like, okay, here Katie goes again. Yes, but with good reason. Because when you step back from all of that and just do nothing, do nothing. Don't plan anything. Maybe go for a walk. Maybe like lay in the grass and look at the sky, watch some clouds, do nothing. You know, that so, so often like you watch kids. I, I saw a kid the other day. Out playing outside somewhere and I was watching him and he was like singing, running around aimlessly, but you could tell he was having a great time and he wasn't doing anything. He was literally just running around aimlessly, singing, talking to himself, not doing anything in particular. I'm like, wow, that kid's really enjoying himself and he's not doing anything in particular, but he's probably happier than most adults. So why, we don't need to fill every second of our day. Like, yes, we can get things done. We can make food and clean our house and go to work and do all of it. But we should also have time where, like you're describing, where we're just alone and quiet with ourselves and we don't necessarily have a, a game plan for, oh, I have to accomplish this within the span of time. We can just be with ourselves, be present, it just find the lightness, the joyful, gentle ebb and flow of life and just enjoy the fact that you're alive. Be playful with it. Yeah, exactly. That's that's where I get my best ideas. And so if I didn't, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, if I didn't have that time, then I would often show up to write with almost nothing to work with. You know, yes. because so much of what I show up with is cultivated in those moments of silence in those moments of rest and relaxing and just letting my mind wander mm -hmm. into my story or my characters and not forcing myself to think about it, but I kind of just can't help thinking about it. <laughs> and oftentimes music will inspire me to be thinking about a certain element or conflict or character's relationship with somebody else. But just going into that realm and exploring it in a very peaceful way, <laughs> I find helps me so much to gain the inspiration and the ideas that I then show up with to write and I have something. I have something I can build off of. I have dialogue that's been floating through my head that I can now write down and I can build a scene around it. And if you don't have those moments and every other moment is just filled with input of some kind, whether you're rushing around doing things or you're, you have to do something like drive somewhere or put your makeup on. There's nothing else to, there's nothing to listen to. And you're, you have the urge to put on a podcast. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna um, dissuade people from putting on our podcast, of course, but <laughs> also find moments where there is silence and you can just be still and be okay with it and maybe just let your mind wander into your story, see where it goes, see yeah. where it takes you. You might get some great ideas there. And I'm saying all this because even if you don't have time to write, I find that to be super satisfying if I can just right. explore ideas. Mm -hmm. And you can do that when you're doing anything else, as long as you're not distracted. Like I wouldn't recommend getting too distracted while driving or something like <laughs> right. that. Right. But if you're doing something that's kind of a mindless task, just let your mind wander and you'll feel at the end of this session of brainstorming or whatever you want to call it, I think you'll feel satisfied that you did 
make some progress. You did uh, sharpen an idea or try out some new ideas right. and gain inspiration. Right, just marinating in your story. Yeah. Yes. Because that helps you grow. It helps give you ideas. Mm-hmm. And like you were saying, if you didn't do that, you would be showing up with nothing to work with. I like yeah. I like how you put that because I definitely feel that too. If you didn't spend time thinking about it and cultivating ideas and you just sat down to write, you might not feel the same inspiration that you would feel if you'd spent that quiet time just kind of meditating on your story. Right. And that's part of focus, in my opinion. That is part of focusing on your writing. Because even if you're not sitting down actually typing words of your story or actually writing a chapter or a scene, you're still focusing on your writing because it's still there in your mind constantly. Mm -hmm. It's still important to you. It's still a priority to you. So keeping that as a priority, even if you don't get time to sit down and write, it's okay because you're still focusing on your writing because you're still focusing on those ideas, building on them, sharpening them, making them better. And you're giving yourself uh, ingredients to work with when you do show up. Right. Yeah, I think that's a great point because that's that's a huge part of it for so many people. And like, I know you spend a lot of time too, just taking notes and writing outline too can be, it seems like if you're someone who does that, I don't outline at all. But if you're someone who outlines, like that's a nice way to be able to work on your book still, even if you're not able to sit down and actually write out that scene itself. Yeah, I'm constantly jumping into my documents and writing down little bits and pieces of ideas for the outline and Even if I don't have time for an actual writing session, I'll just get in there, get into the outline and move some things around or sharpen a few details. And it feels like progress and it helps me to feel like I'm still making progress and still being productive on this project without having to carve out writing sessions necessarily if I don't have time to. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's a great way to be able to feel like you're still moving forward. I think a lot of writers get frustrated when they feel, and I know I I speak from experience here, when it feels like there's no forward trajectory. Mm. (laughs) When you feel like I haven't had a chance to write or do anything writing related. Well, a great way to spend some time working on your book is to do some things that are related to your book, even if you don't have time to sit down and write, like we were just saying, figuring out what some of those triggers are for you. What gets you inspired about your book? Is it listening to a certain playlist or is it looking at some, you know, a pin board or an image, uh, a vision board rather of your story? All those things can help to trigger different streams of thought that would inspire you about your book and help you just marinate in that story so you feel pumped up when you do sit down to write. Yeah, very true. Yeah, all those things are definitely help to give inspiration. And I think if you're able to get up early or stay up late, like figure out what that time is. A lot of times we waste small amounts of time during the day and you really can use those to have mini writing sessions. Don't be afraid of just writing a little bit. Even if you don't have time to sit down and write for three hours, if you wrote for 10 minutes here, like twice a day, there's 20 minutes that maybe would have just been wasted on something else. Yeah. Find little moments that you can replace like, oh, hey, right now I was just going to watch TV for a few minutes. Well, let's, let's pull out the laptop and let's write for a little bit. And who knows what inspiration might strike you during that time. Yeah. So I think those little sessions can be really helpful. It's kind of like someone who never works out because they feel like they can't set aside an hour a day to work out. Well, you don't have to do that. You can gain strength and get flexible just by doing, hey, I'm going to do 10 minutes in the morning. And then if you do that for a year, then that adds up to many, many hours. So those small those small changes actually do amount to something more significant over time. Those are still words that are pushing you forward in your writing journey. Those are still words that are making your book <laughs> become reality. Right. That's what's bringing your book into existence is it doesn't have to be 2,500 words at a time. It could be 200 words. Yeah. And then 200 words. And then before you know it, there's a thousand words you didn't have. Very true. 
We also recommend moments at holiday parties when you just need a breather, go sneak away, <laughs> yes. find a closet to hide in with your laptop and uh, yep. have at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can even, always a good you way can even to write avoid on your phone or, or tablet. Yeah. <laughs> phone or tablet. Some people, some, I know some people who write on their phone. Yeah. That's amazing to me. Yeah. I would find that to be irritating to write on such a small screen. I can barely screen. text. <laughs> yeah, I, same, same. I don't use a phone at all except to, to play music these days. It stays off like yeah. all the time. But if you're someone who uses a phone and uh, or a tablet or something like that, you could always have that as a convenient way to, right. to write you know, down sneak ideas. away. Right. I, oh, I have 20 minutes right now or I'm on a bus for 20 minutes. Yeah. Use the commute time or use the time that you're waiting around for someone to, you know, pick you up from a holiday party or something like that. Use that time to sneak in a little writing time, little mini writing session. Yeah. Always a good idea. <laughs> yep. And a productive way to spend your free time. I thought you were going to say your holidays. <laughs> your holidays too. <laughs> productive way to spend your holidays. <laughs> yeah. Or well, if you don't feel in the writing mood this holiday season, you're like, you know what? I'm just going to take a break, but I'd really like a, a warm, fuzzy, Christmassy book to read. Like we were saying earlier, Abby just wrote a book that's all about the holiday season. It's like a cup of cocoa with a sugar cookie yep it is like snuggling a puppy while eating cookies and drinking cocoa and it's very cozy and cute if you haven't checked it out check it out link in my um link will be in the description if we remember to put it in or you can find it just on amazon or any other retailer by typing in tessa and weston the best christmas ever i hope you guys like the book i'm very excited for you all to read it. Really good Christmas gift too. A lot of you have already read it, which is so exciting. Fits in a stocking. Fix, fits in a stocking, yeah. I think it does. I also have a book that came out, when was it? November? Yeah. Yeah, November. Or no, it was October. Oh, November. October. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I have a book. It's not Christmassy at all, but there is no law saying it can't be read at Christmas time. Nope. So keep that in consideration. <laughs> Searching for Sparrow, audiobook version of it too. Yeah. And, and your audiobook, when's that coming out? I don't know because Audible has delays, <laughs> but hopefully it's sometime in early it's December. Yeah, I'm, I'm it's excited great. for you guys to listen to it. So That's Read by Abby herself, of read course. By, read by her truly. Abby has an amazing <laughs> reading voice. Thank you. I feel spoiled because I've gotten to listen to you read so many books. I know. Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Very soothing. <laughs> very soothing i fell asleep through almost the whole silver chair i was bummed i know you need to read it really i know good. i do it's really I do good for sure but yeah so go go buy abby's book buy my book support this show that's one of the best ways you can do that is yes. to check out our books we talk about writing and we support you guys we cheer you on in your writing journey and we're writers too so keep that in mind <laughs> go check out our books <laughs> yes and check out our patreon if you get value out of this podcast thank you again to our amazing patrons you can support the show by going to patreon.com slash the kate and abby show and help us keep this podcast alive and free of interruptions you can also watch the video version of this podcast on kate's youtube channel which is youtube.com slash k a emmons and check out all kinds of writing videos and write with me live streams and all kinds of good stuff on my channel which which is youtube.com slash abby emmons until the next time stay stoked and rock on